Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today marks the release of a fairly significant version of the Unity game engine. Unity 2018.1 is officially available. Now, it's been in beta for the last couple of weeks, uh, but it is now available for uh, everybody to use. Now, do keep in mind, some of the major features there are still marked as preview, which means they are not ready to be used in a production environment, but they are substantial features. So, I decided to do a video covering uh, some of the highlight moments of the 2018.1 release. And the first one, the biggest one by far and away is the new scriptable render pipeline. So essentially what they've done is they've opened up the graphics rendering pipeline so it's no longer a black box. Before it used to be behind the scenes, mostly C++ code, I believe. Again, it's a black box. We don't know. Uh, and you really didn't have any control over. Now what they've done is actually opened it up so you can script the pipeline using C Sharp. So the graphics rendering process is completely in your hands now. And they've also implemented two versions of the pipeline of which they've done videos previewing, which I'm showing you now. Uh, there is the high, pre, uh, the high definition uh, pipeline, uh, which is uh, for just newest hardware only, PCs running DirectX 11, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Metal and Vulcan devices, um, and that's it. So if you don't fall under one of those categories, you can't even run the high definition render pipeline. And the basic idea here is there is a lot more uh, fidelity in this pipeline. This pipeline, the renderer being used as a hybrid tile, cluster forward, deferred renderer, uh, which I, I'm not even going to pretend to, to compact what exactly that means in this particular video. Uh, but it gives you advanced features like volumetric lighting, unified lighting, uh, new light shapes, uh, etc. So you get more detail in your scene, but at the cost of more processing power requirements. Um, also for existing devices, lighter weight devices, mobile devices, etc., there is the lightweight render pipeline. So they've implemented both pipelines for you, and you of course can implement your own. Now the lightweight pri um, pipeline is a single pass forward renderer pipeline. Um, and it makes much fewer draw costs, and therefore it puts much lower demand on your hardware, so you can get by having a lower quality hardware. Now, ironically enough, um, Unity released this video showing the two in action side by side, and if I'm honest, I actually like the look of the lightweight render pipeline better. I'm curious to hear what you think. Let me know down below which of the two images you actually find uh, better looking. Now, of course, a still image isn't going to sell it because a lot of the detail or the higher fidelity from the high definition pipeline is going to be in the lighting and similar results. So uh, those are the major new releases here. And there's a bunch of stuff that goes with it. Now, do be aware that each particular pipeline also has shader uh, limitations. So you're gonna have to write your shaders to go with the pipeline. Now I believe all of the out of the box unlit shaders will work with the lower definition pipeline, but do be aware some of your existing shaders will break under this new setup. Uh, on top, they've also created new templates for each pipeline. So there is a um, high def and a, a high end and a lightweight uh, preview as long as well as a VR. Now the VR actually uses the lightweight uh, rendering pipeline as well. Now another major part of this release is the existence of shader graph. Now shader graph, um, if you watched my video a couple days ago about the freely released uh, graphics um, rendering package, uh, that's essentially what shader graph does. Now shader graph is a way of creating shaders uh, via graphs. <laughs> now, I guess you could have probably guessed that by the name, but essentially that's what a shader graph is. It's a graph or a node or a network or a flowchart or however you want to call it of nodes that all go together. And basically you are creating a GLSL or HLSL shader just programmatically or sorry, visually instead of programmatically. So you can uh, link various different properties together to create a graph that is ultimately your visual shader. Um, it's just it's another way of programming shaders. It's much more uh, accessible to a non-coder. Um, and then there are other features in this release as well. Uh, there's a progressive light mapper, uh, post-processing uh, features that are new dynamic resolution support for PS4 has been added, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the next two big features that are coming out of this one are, or three big features, they all kind of work together. It's all around the way that um, structure data is structured in your project and they're called um, the ECS system the burst compiler and the job system those three things all kind of go together uh, to kind of change the way you're going to structure your unity code in the future now these are also uh, preview level at this point and unfortunately 
unfortunately, I do believe the new ECS system, the Entity Component System, is not going to be editable in the editor yet, which is kind of a huge deal, to be honest. So you're not going to be able to set properties of a component-based system or ECS-based system um, like you can now with the mono behavior based system. Now, what exactly is a component system? Well, okay, let's be really clear. This gets a little confusing, but an entity component system and a component system are actually technically slightly different things. Um, in the world of um, Unity, they've been using components for ages, but they've also used something called a God object, a really big bloated object oriented parent class that's your um, game object or mono behavior base class and so a lot of the functionality was provided via inheritance so you end up getting a lot of functionality a lot of times that you didn't necessarily need well an ecs system screws uh, um, flips that around a little bit and it's basically a data driven approach to game data now i'm butchering a definition of ecs because i'm trying to keep this quick but basically the idea behind an entity component system a proper one not what unity's implemented in the past but what they're implementing in the future is basically you've got your data um your you've got your um collections of data so basically um you know, you could have something like a game object today, but your game object is pretty empty. And then it's composed of components. And then on top of that, and the key part is, then you have systems. Now systems are what operate on data. Uh, so one of the examples they give is you might have data and then you might need to rotate that data. So to rotate the data, uh, you would implement a rotator system. And that rotator system can work generically on any compatible data. And there's where the nice thing comes is your systems can be a little bit abstracted away from your data. Your data will be more lightweight. Basically, the system will only kind of have and use what it needs. Uh, so you should end up with lighter weight code overall. And then the nice thing about it is it's also generally much more friendly to parallelism. Now, parallelism is where the job system comes in. The job system is the new parallel code structure that's being implemented in uh, the Unity game engine. Now, parallelism is important because this is, um, in the world with uh, more and more cores, you wanna be able to spread your data out across cores, but the, your, your data needs to be sort of independent at that point. So if you've got data on core one and on core two and they depend on each other, the advantage of parallelism, parallelism goes away because when that one will need the other it'll start blocking it so you can't really have multiple cores doing things very efficiently that's where the job system comes into place it's a nice way of organizing uh, activities or actions into a parallel sizable god i'm not going to say that again parallel a bowl, yeah, we'll go with that, code, so that it can nicely handle it run across multiple uh, platforms. Now, the details of how they implement the job system are way beyond uh, what I'm going to get into in this video. Just know that there is this new way of basically storing and dealing with data in ECS and the new way of basically having multiple concurrent threads of data in the job system. And then to tie it all together is the new Burst compiler. Now, as I understand it, the Burst compiler is an LLVM, which is probably uh, it's it's a little bit tricky to explain, but basically it's a virtualized compiler technology that is very, very popular from the Linux world. Um, and it is an optimizing compiler that sits behind the programming language in action. Uh, so um, GCC has been using LLVM as a backend for a very long period of time, and it allows them to do some really neat things. In some ways, it it operates on object code and allows you another layer of uh, optimization out of it. Well, they've taken and implemented an LLM VM compiler they've called Burst, which takes .NET uh, intermediate language, so that's the byte code that .NET compiles down to, and produces machine code um, that is compatible and friendly with all of their other systems. Um, so. Basically, the nutshell is job system should make your code more parallelable, uh, ECS should make your code more lightweight, and your data, uh, well, actually, we'll stick with lightweight, and then your uh, system should make your code more usable and less bloated, and then burst compiler theoretically should make it all faster.
So those three things all work together to kind of bring you the future of coding in Unity. Uh, it's very much an interesting concept. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how well all these things work out and what the real world uh, performance implementations uh, implications are of it. Uh, but some pretty profound stuff there. Now, this isn't it for the release. There's a number of other features. There's a, a 2D shape that can be changed on the fly that looks quite cool. Uh, there are... Um, uh, asset import improvements, uh, editor, the package manager greatly improved, uh, gives you a nice way of bringing in uh, new functionality into the engine in a cleaner way. Uh, kind of on and on, but those were the biggies by far and away. There's also improvements to the cinema machine and timeline implementation. Uh, oh yeah, and for you Mac users, uh, Mono Develop is being, I guess technically Windows users too, but I don't know any use of Windows users actually using Mono Develop. Uh, but it is being uh, deprecated as a supported IDE. It's not really a big deal because Mono Develop was the underlying source code base for Xamarin Sharp, which in turn became Visual Studio Code on Mac. So it's kind of trading one thing for another, but they're almost identical. So if you're on Mac and you want to work um, if you you want uh, an IDE, you can no longer use Mono Develop. You now have to use either Visual Studio uh, for Mac, or the cool part is uh, Visual Studio Code via extensions also works. Uh, and I would actually highly recommend you check out Visual Studio Code if you haven't already. And then on top of that, there's a number of uh, smaller features, uh, resonance audio, Google spatial uh, awareness API, uh, audio API is um, now out uh, and available. Uh, Magic Leap support is in there. Uh, independent uh, Daydream VR support is in there. AR Core 1.1 support is in there. Uh, the typical stuff you expect on a new Unity release, the whole bunch of new platforms, new version updates, etc. But uh, by far and away, the biggest new improvements in this particular release are the uh, new programmable rendering pipelines, the new shader, uh, shader graph system for visually creating your own shaders, and of course, the three new backend technologies, your ECS system, your burst compiler, and oh, I knew I was going to forget one. Oh, the other one. Uh, come on, brain. I just mentioned it. I was just talking about it. Oh, the job system. So those are really going to be huge fundamental changes to every single Unity developer going forward because they basically change the way you code in Unity. Now, again, right now, components don't work fully in the editor, and that is a work towards the future thing. So obviously, um, that is going to be a big gotcha for a lot of people. So if you want to edit the data for your components, I think it's all code based for now, or at least partially for now. Anyways, that was it. That is Unity 2018.1, a pretty significant release. Um, uh, you know what, I'm going to have to get my hands dirty with a bunch of this stuff um, to you know, fully grasp what the ramifications of these changes are going to be, but it does sound like a pretty profound release. Now, it's also kind of cool to move away from the bloat and gotcha of the current object system in Unity. So I think code, Unity generated code in the future, once this new system is uh, set up and going, is going to be a... Um, it's going to result in a lot of cleaner code out there. And the cool thing with these new programmable uh, pipelines is it's going to free up larger studios or mid-sized studios to really change out the Unity rendering results. And one of the big complaints with Unity is, is the renderer, the consistency of it, because people are basically using the black box renderer. Now that you can really get in there and customize the renderer, you're going to start having a lot more trouble you know, saying, oh, that's a Unity game. Uh, just by looking at it. So it gives a whole bunch more flexibility to end developers. Probably not something I'm ever going to get into because I'm not going to be customizing a pipeline anytime soon. I'm not a graphics programmer at that level. Uh, but to the people that are, it's going to be a huge boon to them. So a pretty significant release. Uh, let me know what you thought of it all down below. All right, that's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.